if there's one thing for certain in boxing, it's that not all guards are created equal. Winky was already a rare breed as he fought Southpaw, but what made him special was his impenetrable high guard. The misconception about Winky Wright was that he was a defensive first fighter. I would respectfully disagree, as to me, he was a pressure fighter with a defensive base. Let me explain. When you think of Winky Wright, you think of his high guard, but he rarely fought off his back foot. He worked heavily behind his lead jab, pushing his opponents backwards. Trench warfare as he fought for every inch of the squared circle. If there were one key note to take away from Winky, it's that everything that glitters is not gold. There was nothing truly flashy about his style. He was the embodiment of astounding fundamentals. As his foundation was built on an indestructible guard, solid jab, but most importantly, a high work rate as the Florida pavements carved his cardio into a 10 cylinder engine block. Perhaps the most important piece of equipment used in a ring by fighters the night of the fight are the gloves they choose for battle. Winky always preferred Grant gloves, unlike Claire Torres' Mexican style gloves, which are more compact and were favorable to the puncher. The Grant gloves were built for support, especially around the wrist. And if there's one thing you need in terms of defense, it's support. Since the gloves weren't compact like Claire Torres, it was a bit larger in circumference, which helped cover more space. Wanky used his high guard to walk his opponents down as he stood in front of them, forcing them to fight him off the entire duration of the fight. This meant his opponents had to use their legs more as they were most often pushed back. This can be very draining to the cardio, adding to the fact that they had to constantly throw more punches than they'd like in order to maintain the distance between the two. There was often discouragement from his opponents as they would launch all the heavy artillery on Winky's balls and was still unable to push back nor slow him down one bit. His high guard wasn't static. When you think of static, you think of Arthur Abraham, where he would just sit and absorb all the punches with the strong guard in hopes that his opponent slowed down in the later rounds, for there he'd unload his heavy shots. Winky had a very active high guard. He wasn't just platonic in the sense that all he did was hold his hands up high. He also utilized hand blocks and parried oncoming punches. Parrying added another weapon into his arsenal as he was able to deflect punches to then counter off of it. Winky also utilized head movement as most boxers who fought behind the high guard typically kept their head on the center line as head movement became a little more tricky with their gloves attached to the face. This added more depth to his defense as his head placement wasn't as predictable. Also, since his opponents had to remain active, Winky would sometimes catch his opponents off guard by breaking rhythm with his guard by pulling back to then return fire. One of Winky's best defensive elements was his footwork. By the common eye, his movements look a bit mechanical, but his understanding of distance is what gave his opponents help. Winky will often do these short back steps when his opponents engaged. This was critical for a few reasons. This would help minimize the amount of impact that was taken on his gloves and forearms. Since his opponents were so accustomed to Winky standing directly in front of them as a target, they most often didn't have to step into the punches in order to lane, so Winky distorted the distance by taking half steps back. It was harder for his opponents to lane flush as there wasn't a stationary target. By pulling back, he was able to deflect a lot of these punches and lessening its impact. When Winky timed his back step correctly, he was able to get his opponents to reach in to the encounter while they were off balance. If you were to ask any expert what's the most important punch in boxing, they'd all tell you the same thing, the jab. The jab is the closest punch to landing against the target. Winky used his jab methodically. With such a solid guard, he favored to press the action. As he wanted to wear his opponents down while trying to beat them into submission, he used the jab in order to push his opponents back, as well as to hold position and keep the distance needed to where he could land his cross behind. When Winky took on Trinidad, you can say he single-handedly dismantled him with his jab alone. Trinidad's best punch with his left hook, but he often used his jab cross to set up his left hook. Winky disrupted Trinidad's rhythm all night. 
Winky kept his piston jab pumping. The jab constantly made Trinidad reset. Since Trinidad had to have his feet set in order to land a meaningful hook, Winky made sure the jab never allowed for Trinidad to fully set. Winky didn't require many complex angles as he was able to work his way into the pocket with his jab. Since he had a reliable guard, he was able to stay in front of his opponents. This meant he was able to open up and beat them to the punch. On the inside, he would throw good, short punches. It was hard for his opponents at time as there were little to no telegraph. By the time they saw it coming, the head would have already snapped back. Once Winky was able to back his opponents up, it was hard for them to regain ground as Winky started to put his punches together, being sure to throw punches and bunches. With such bulldoze and aggression, Winky really made his opponents work for any little breathing room. If they were unable to keep him off of them, he would continue to hammer at the defense until their will started to collapse. A true buggy main during his prime, stylistically he was a nightmare for anyone, a pressure fighter with a defensive base. On top of that, he had an engine like none other. Nothing came easy for his opponents as they rarely even had a second to breathe or collect their thoughts. A truly underappreciated champion as he never got the stardom he so well deserved. Mikey will go down as one of the greats as he would have been champion in any given era of boxing.